everyone and welcome to my channel, Fitzsimmons Plays. Uh, Fitzsimmons is uh, my married name. Recently found out from a friend that my name is kind of a pun in a way, so I figured why not use it for this channel. Um, this is my first ever Let's Play, so bear with me. I've recorded things before, but never like this, so this is something completely different to me. Um, definitely talking into a microphone is kind of weird, but I'll get through it. Um, so, right now we have the Hunger Games Challenge, as you probably see from the title of this episode. Um, obviously other simmers have done this before online. Um, they've also done, you know, um, the princess a Disney princess theme to it, which is what we have here today, but I really wanted to do my own Hunger Games challenge with some princesses involved. Um, so for many of you who probably have watched other simmers on YouTube, you already know about the Hunger Games challenge. Um, but for those of you who don't, I would still like to go over the rules with you. So, the Hunger Games, um, this kind of, this kind of challenge, um, was inspired to me by another YouTuber, um, named Coffee. Um, I watch many of her videos, I love what she does, um, and she just really inspired me to do my own Let's Play. I really enjoy watching her videos and I was like, you know what, I really want to do that too. Um, I really enjoy playing The Sims just on my own and I've done my own Hunger Games challenge before, but I really want to do this kind of thing where uh, I just share my let my playthrough with all of, you know, all of you. Um, so I will put a link down to Coffee's channel in the description below because I really do think that if you haven't seen her content that you should. She is great. She's really funny and uh, I just really enjoy watching her videos. So to start off with the Hunger Games challenge, um, you're, you know, the first thing is that you have eight contestants, so therefore a full household of uh, players to go through. And each contestant will take part in the games and also will die in the games as well. Um, so when taking part in a challenge, you know, you have a winner, you have a loser, the winner typically goes into the victory house while the loser gets punished in some way. Now I know um, in Coffee's channel she does give out prizes for those that win and she also gives out certain kinds of punishments for those who lose. Um, later on in her other Hunger Games series she kind of decided to do prizes and certain punishments when she gets down to only four people left. I might do something like that. I'm still kind of thinking about it. Um, the only reason is because it can be a little difficult to think of, you know, different things each, almost every, well probably every other episode of prizes and punishment, punishments for each sim. Um, only because it's just there's just so many contestants, um, so I I might do the four thing, the four you know four people left thing, um, but if I come up with something, then I I might do the uh, every time we have a winner they'll get a prize and every time we have a loser they'll get a certain punishment. Um, another thing is with the death rounds. Um, Typically, I've seen the Hunger Games with, you know, there's only a certain amount of ways to die in the Sims games, so typically you see by fire or drowning in a pool. 
Um, when I've played the Hunger Games on my own, I definitely did those kind of things. It's the easiest for this game, or for this challenge, I mean. Um, but the issue is that sometimes you get more than one sim that dies. And to not, you know, you don't want that to happen because then your, uh, your game is shorter than what you want it to be. So what I did, again, from coffee, I found this mod. Um, it's called the Extreme Violence Mod, and I will link that in the description as well. Um, it can get pretty brutal, but I feel like it adds more suspense to the game. And so instead of like your sims being in a pool and drowning or like in one room and then you're caught on fire, um, your sims can be anywhere at any time and when you enable them to um, use this mod, you kind of just wait in suspense until you see one sim kill another. So you don't know, like, who's going to kill who, and it's just very suspenseful to me, and I just felt like it was more Hunger Games-esque. Um, so I really wanted to install that mod instead of just using fire and pool. Um, and it, it, it's really interesting, it's, it, <laughs> and brutal, like I said. Um, Another thing with the challenge is you have a so-called slave, and um, since this is Disney, I figured it could be anybody, um, anybody from any movie, who I don't have in a list um, for this season or any other seasons because I do plan on having more than one season of this. Um, so typically, anybody who is a Disney princess cannot be a slave, or anybody who, um, are, you know, like, let's say, like, Jane from Tarzan, maybe not her. So, like, pretty much main female leads I probably won't have as a slave because they are going to take part in other, um, in other seasons. So I would say maybe more like side characters or something like Sebastian or something. Um, but yeah, anybody can be a slave. Um, and the slave's purpose is once one sim dies um, after the first death round, we'll bring in the slave and that slave will cook and clean for our contestants. Um, and when it comes to meals, it's pretty much first come first serve, you know, like a family meal, I think only serves maybe four, maybe a little bit more. Um, or I'll cook, have the slave cook a certain amount of plates. Um, only because we don't want every single sim to get a plate there because there is a chance somebody could die of starvation. It is the Hunger Games after all. Um, so, so there's that. Um, that's pretty much it for the slave. Um, but let's go on to our lot. So first, let me show you the cabin. I did kind of want our contestants to rough it out outside in like a tent, and I saw an outdoor shower, but then I realize that more than one sim can use the tent and that's actually against the rules when it comes to the sleeping situation. As you can see here, I have one double bed. Hopefully people can sleep in that. I might have to enlarge the room. Um, so yeah, you have somebody that can sleep in the bed. Maybe two, depends on their relationship status that they will grow on their own. I will not tamper with that and you have a couch that they could take a nap on. And those are the only two spots that they are allowed to have to sleep. Um, other than that, they'll just have to faint on the floor. 
Um, they're only allowed one bathroom. And typically you're not supposed to have a kitchen, but since I don't have a slave just yet, I put one in there for them. Um, only because I don't, I actually don't want somebody to starve, um, so soon in the game. I would rather have this episode be kind of easier for them. Um, and if somebody dies right now, then <laughs> this is going to be a very short game. And I don't want that to have happen. Um, I also included a table area for them that they can sit and eat at. Um, I, excuse me, I included an entertainment area so they have some music, a TV to watch. I also provided skills for them. So they have an easel, a chess table, bookcase, they have, you have a, uh, some exercise equipment outside. And that really isn't in the rules to have that. I just provided it because I feel like if you're going to participate in a game, then you need to work on making yourself better so you have a better chance of winning. Another thing I put in here, just for fun, so this looks like an ordinary bookcase, but really, actually I'll keep that up go down, it's a dungeon! <laughs> um, I thought that this was a fun little addition to the slot. So this is where um, anybody who loses a challenge, this is where I'm going to put them. Either I'm going to have them walk down the stairs and go in here and then I'll lock them in, or I'll teleport them in here and lock them in. Um, <laughs> and they get no light in this little room, it's just, it, this is it just a blank room, blank dark room that they'll have to deal with for a little while. Um, and I might, I'll probably, let me do this now, actually, lock door for everyone. Um, I'll probably unlock it for everyone when somebody is down there and maybe um, one of the girls can go down and be like, hey, are you okay? Or something like that. Um, so. The rest of this lot, let me go over here for a moment. This blank area, I figured we could put the uh, challenges in. So like, if the challenge was to have them paint, I'll have them paint or run a treadmill or something like that. Um, I also provided the pool so we can have some challenges in the pool, whether it's just to swim or maybe to have a uh, hold your breath contest, you know, something like that. I also included a little flower bed area, and this is where we're going to put the graves. It's a little dark, but it's the Hunger Games, so it's fitting. Um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and lock this gate as well for everybody, because we don't want anyone to have access to the Victory House just yet. So let me zoom out a little. Let me let's see. Oh, good. Okay. Sometimes this roof um, likes to disappear when I start the game, and then when I'm playing for a little while, it reappears. I don't know why it does that. It just does. So we're just gonna go with it. Um, so the victory house. I had the idea to build a castle. Um, simply because this is the Disney Princess Hunger Games challenge, so I figured a castle was fitting for this. Um, I actually designed it using a layout that I found on Google Images, and then I just kind of tweaked it in my own way a little bit, like adding little um, rounded areas like these two things right here. Um, and, uh, so yeah, um, part of it, I kind of wanted it to look medieval-like, and then I kind of make, put in a lot, I should say, um, modern elements to it, because The Sims is mainly with, uh, modern furniture and stuff. Um, 
not a whole lot of medieval stuff. So the look can be a little medieval, but everything else is more modern. So we have our yard here. Try and frame this up a little bit better. Um, we got a little walkway with an arch, and then we have a so-called bridge in a way. I like to think it's a bridge. Um, that goes over a moat around the castle. And I remember in The Sims 3, you were allowed to make ponds and stuff. Maybe that was The Sims 2. I could be wrong. I didn't really fiddle around with that much. Um, but I didn't see that option here in The Sims 4, so I kind of missed that. Because uh, I really wanted to provide a moat around the castle. So to accomplish that, I just used the swimming pool tool. Um, and that was the best I could do. And coming back down in front of the castle if it will oh boy if it'll let me I might just have to go down to the first floor all right calm down game first floor there we go we have a garden area that our Disney princess whoever wins the victory house can come in and maybe sit around in the garden we got some candles you know lighting the area we got a bunch of trees and statues flowers bushes um oh, there we go um i really enjoy the um, romantic garden pack um it it just really helped um make this feel like a more Disney <laughs> princess castle I feel like um, it's just it's just so beautiful I even put it on like my regular households if I want them to have like a even just a small garden in the back I'm just like ah oh, I can't resist using these it's just so pretty um, so yeah we got a garden on both sides of the castle so looking at the first floor here we have our entryway we Kind of spin around a little so you can check it out from every angle. And then we have it lead to a grand staircase. And then over here we have our dining area. We have a kitchen. Let me kind of go over top. There we go. And then we have my favorite room in the house. Um, I don't really care too much for the color pink, but... It is a princess game and I figured pink was fitting, but this is my favorite room simply because of this design right here. I had this idea and I just fell in love with it once I kept decorating and now it's my favorite place in the whole in the whole house here. Um, let's see, I have the slave quarters right here because this is where the slave will stay and cook the meals and and stuff like that. We also have the bathroom area. And then over here, now in a castle, typically castles do have chapels in them. Um, I didn't really want to do that. So I had the idea of like, well, they might need like a nice lounge area to relax in so I was gonna have a chapel slash lounge area um, but then I discovered that there were stained glass windows in the game and now it's just a full-blown chapel I couldn't resist um, and there no one is probably gonna use this but I don't care so it'll be funny if somebody does but I like the room and so I wanted to keep it but going up to the second floor, we have the lounge area, along with a library. So, you know, when we have Belle in the game, <laughs> she's going to love this room if she wins the victory house. Um, we have a little TV area, and then we have a gaming area just for some fun, another chess table over here, and we have a bar area. So I really went all out 
with this for. Um, I just wanted them to have some fun, but at the same time still be able to work on their skills, which is why I also provided a workout area. And then to help them relax a little bit more, I put in a sauna and a yoga wellness area for them. And for the Victory House, this is pretty much the only floors that they have access to. Other than that, the third and fourth floors are all detail, just decorative stuff. Okay, so I believe that's it for the lot. Let me talk about our eight contestants. So, like I said before, you know, get Disney princesses and uh, I'm going to have more than one season, so I pretty much have a list of all these princesses <laughs> out in front of me right now. Um, and my initial plan was to start from the very beginning and work my way up, so therefore starting with Snow White and then going up to Moana, pretty much. Um, but I had also decided that you know, since I want this to be more than one season, um, and also I don't really see these characters a lot anywhere, um, I wanted to include characters that weren't necessarily on the Disney princess line, and they also may not necessarily be princesses, you know, like, for instance, Mulan is technically not a princess, but she is on the Disney princess line. So I figured, well, there's other princesses who don't really get a lot of recognition. Um, and then you also have other characters who aren't princesses who I do feel like also deserve more recognition. So I included them in with the Disney princesses. And you will see that in, uh, in this first season here too. Another thing I did was take animals. So, for instance, like, Nala will appear in a season. Not this season, but she will appear. Um, you know, technically she marries Simba. She becomes a queen. So technically not a princess, but she does become royalty. Um, so I decided to put her in here. But I just, you know, took animals and gave them a human form. So that was a lot of fun to try and figure out, okay, what would they look like as a human and what would they wear? So it, it was real, it was a lot of fun. Um, I also included princesses who Disney didn't make, but they suddenly became Disney, kind of like Star Wars um, and Anastasia, um, simply because Disney bought them. Um, and then later on, I'm gonna, like, towards the end of the uh, whole series, um, I've included princesses who just simply aren't Disney. Um, simply because I kind of ran out of Disney princesses, and I ended up having a household that was a few princesses short. So, uh, yeah, later on, we're, we're gonna get all the Disney princesses out of the way, and then will bring in um, princesses who just aren't Disney, just for fun. Um, so another thing is that my, uh, my game doesn't really like a lot of custom content. I know that, um, like coffee, there are other simmers too, who like to use the actual dresses for the princesses. Um, though I'm not a against that at all. It's just my computer doesn't always like custom content. I do have some installed and it seems to work fine, but I know that eventually too many is just not gonna work out, so I, I really don't install that kind of stuff a lot. Um, but in a way it's it's kind of nice because then trying to create these princesses, I was able to give them my own unique look to them. So it was kind of fun to think about what would they wear in the modern world. So I did that with a lot of the princesses. Um, though if I did see something that kind of looked like their original 
wear. So like, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, so let's take Belle, for instance. I know that what I gave her won't look like uh, how she is in the movie, but if, uh, if I did find like the original yellow dress, I might put her in the yellow dress. Um, but we all know that that is not part of the game. So if I did see something that was at least similar, I tried to match their wear. But other than that, a lot of it is just me fiddling around going, oh, this is cute on them. They would so wear this in the modern world. Um, so that being said, let me introduce you to the characters and I'm just gonna go down the line here. And first off, we have the very first Disney princess, Snow White. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Get, uh, get all of her to show. There we go. So, we have Snow White. This is my modern take of her. You know, I still gave her the color scheme. That's pretty much what I stuck to, no matter what was the princess's color scheme of what they usually wear. Um, she does have some red, you know, got the lipstick. She's got a little red barrette in here. Uh, when it came to clothes, I couldn't really find um, something red that looked nice. But, let's see, where is the personality? Okay, so traits. She is a music lover. She is family-oriented. She is cheerful. And it says alluring because I gave her the soulmate trait. And moving on to one of our animal princesses that I gave a human look to is Feline from Bambi. And I figured pink and white was a nice color scheme for her. You know, she's kind of, uh, she's kind of like a sweet but kind of flirtatious character. Um, but yeah, this was a lot of fun to try and figure out how Feline would look in real life as a human. Uh, for traits, we have romantic, we have cheerful. She loves the outdoors, and it says collector because it gave her the outdoor enthusiast trait. Moving on to Cinderella right here. So she was, um, I remember her being a little difficult because I couldn't decide whether to go with the modern look or go ahead and go with how she looked around her stepmother's house. Um, but I felt this was appropriate for her, you know. Um, it's still really nice looking. Kind of like the dress that her fairy godmother gives her, but obviously not as <laughs> ball gownish. <laughs> so she is good. She is family oriented. I put her as a dog lover because she does have Bruno in the movie. Um, and she's also alluring because of the soulmate trait. So now we'll go to Aurora. Aurora was a lot of fun to do. Um, because, you know, there's the whole, oh, that look. Who are you giving that look to? I can't tell Snow White. I don't know. One of these girls. Um, but Aurora was fun to do because, you know, there's the whole, the dress is blue, the dress is pink kind of thing. So I went with both. Um... I wasn't too thrilled of putting these kind of shoes on her. Um, I did really like these socks on her, but I had a hard time trying to find shoes that looked good with this outfit. So I just kind of went with this. This was the best I could do. Um, but she is a romantic. She loves the outdoors. She's a music lover, and she's alluring because of the soulmate trait. And moving on to another animal 
Um, not sure how many of you seen Robin Hood, um, but okay, come on. There we go. Okay, I can't really get a full body. Okay, well, we'll do this. Um, so yeah, not sure how many of you have seen Robin Hood, but um, all of the characters are animals, and Robin Hood is a fox, and you have our character here, Maid Marian, who is also a fox, and then you have Little John, who's a bear, so just all these characters that are animals. And uh, though she's probably technically not a princess, um, I really enjoyed adding her to the group and giving her a human look. Um, so she is family oriented, she loves the outdoors, she is good, and she is alluring because of the soulmate trait. And next we have Princess Leia. So her look is literal. So I, I did kind of go back and forth. I was like, ah, my god, giving her a modern look would be really nice, but I just couldn't pass up what the game provided. They have Star Wars costumes, and this is one of them, along with the hair, and I, I just really couldn't pass it up. So she is self-assured, she is outgoing, active, and she has a high metabolism because I made her a bodybuilder, um, simply because I couldn't find anything else that really fit her other than the idea that she fights her own battles. That's pretty much what I based that off of. Um, next, I, I'm i sorry, I really can't pronounce this next princess's name. I, I have seen the movie, it's The Black Cauldron, um, but I haven't really seen that since I was a kid. So, I, I really don't remember much from it. Um, it. Her name's like... Oh, God. Elemy? Something like that? Elemy? I don't know. Um, it, it's really hard for me to pronounce. Maybe next episode I can pronounce it a little bit better. Um, but she is from the Black Cauldron. I gave her a straight-up modern look. Um, so that was a lot of fun to play with. Um, so yeah, but like I said, I don't really remember much from this movie, so I actually googled her personality and based it off of what I found. So she is self-assured, she's ambitious, she is good, and she has animal affection because of the friend of the animals trait. And um, I gave her that because one... I wasn't sure what else would fit her. And two, I believe in the movie she has a pet pig? Or something like that? Um, I'm not, I'm not really too sure on that, but I know that it said that she likes animals, I suppose. So I, I just gave her that and I didn't know what else to do for her. Um, but I, I would really like to watch The Black Cauldron again. Because, like I said, I really don't remember much of it. But, uh, I, I remember, I do remember watching it as a kid and enjoying it. So, moving on to the last princess. And I will be honest, she is my favorite princess in the Disney line. Um, but I will not be biased at all. Um, I won't make her win just because I like her. If she wins, she wins. If she loses, she loses. It's a game, so I don't really care all too much, but I do kind of hope she wins. Um, but we have Ariel here, and I made her a music lover. She is creative. <laughs> I gave her the clumsy trait, and she's alluring because of the soulmate trait. Um, so her look is pretty straightforward, you know, like something like the she seashell bra and then her fishtail. Um, you know, it's just her basic look, and it's the look that everybody knows. So I think that's gonna be it for this video. I would keep going, but I don't want this video to get any longer than it already is. So, um, I'll have the next episode be the first playthrough, and 
we will have our first challenge and see who wins and see who loses. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you liked it. Bye!